<laughs> oh, it's all going wrong tonight. <laughs> Hello, good evening. It's Tuesday, it's uh, nine o'clock and just get up to 30 seconds. Uh, and uh, all sorts of stuff was going on there in the first uh, minute before I went live. Um, but there you go, these things are indeed centre tries. So hopefully when I click onto my little shot with device cam, you will hear me as well as see it. Um, because <laughs> I'd made a couple of changes to the shot there. Um, yes, so tonight we're going to be looking at a few of the news stories that have been around today. Um, an exploding e-cig in North Yorkshire, in the very town I went to secondary school in. Yeah, uh, and um, also a pharmacy that doesn't sell e-cigs but does. Hmm, you know what it's about if you've seen Twitter today, um, but I shall show you that story. And then also in part two, We'll be looking at the Spinner 2, the new and improved version, um, along with this lovely little EVOD, uh, which has now got a glass tank. Oh, yeah. And all that, all that is going to be after we have the titles, uh, when I find them, and they're there. Yes, <laughs> it's Vapacine. Vapacine is proudly sponsored by Health Evade, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. Hello, hello, good evening. Welcome to Vapor Scene on Tuesday, the 8th of April. Just looking across at that monitor because it's got the date on and that's got the time on. <laughs> uh, I think I've got nicotine or just everywhere today. It just went everywhere when I was filling my EVOD pre show. But there you go, this EVOD in here, uh, which you'll see, there we go, <laughs> we'll see it in there, that EVOD, I was filling it uh, and um, didn't quite notice that I was just overfilling it and it was all dripping down the centre all over my leg and everything but there you go because my hand disappears if I do that yes trickery because I've put device cam there out of the shot you see and then I can just turn to it anyway there you go I digress about my uh, failings as a presenter <laughs> today <sighs> it's been a funny old day never mind so on tonight's show we're going to be looking in part two at the spinner two and no, it's not. <laughs> it's not a variable wattage. It is still variable voltage. Um, however, um, it's new and improved. Um, and I've been using it for the past few days. And uh, you know me and spinners. I tend to break them. Um, but uh, I tend to break them by sitting on them because I leave them in my pockets. Um, but there you go. Uh, and then um, we've got the second part from a few weeks ago of the box mod build. And can I find the blinking mod that I built? No, I can't. <laughs> Don't know where it is. I'm not even sure if I've given it away to somebody. Um, but there you go. So if I can find it for a future show, <laughs> I'll bring it to you. That's if we have time. Anyway, and we're gonna move on straight on to kind of the big story today. There's two half decent stories. Uh, and the, the big one is this exploding e-cig um, that was in the mail online today and thank you to Kat who saw this uh, in our Skype chat and who posted up um, the link uh, and I went on and had a look and I could see the fire coming at me this the moment an e-cigarette explodes into fireball engulfing barmaid who amazingly escapes with just a charred dress now I don't know if you've seen this um, video or not and I've got two two copies of it I've got the original one but then I've also slowed it right down so you can see it almost frame by frame and it's an interesting watch i have to say so we'll watch the video first and then i'll show you the rest of the article here it comes
and here it comes again slightly slower, he says. There it is, slightly slower. Bit of a mess that, wasn't it? Yeah. I slowed it down even more and there's a little arrow pointing at, at where the e-sig is. And just watch, it moves very slightly before it explodes, which must be the buildup of gas. But have a look. Here it comes. You can see it there at the tip of the arrow and it moves just there. Boom. Off it goes. Uh, and you've seen the rest of the footage already. Yes, so interesting, um, I'll just put the wrong shot on, doesn't matter, get this one, yes, interesting footage. Uh, and the rest of the story, um, if I go to this one, you can see the picture there of the barmaid with her scorched dress and the e-cig user himself. Uh, it belonged to 21 year old Stuart Patterson, who was also working in the pub at the time and has been trying to quit smoking since December last year. He said, I put the e-cigarette on charge in my iPad charger, iPad charger, which I've done countless times before. The battery was some totally uh, wicked e-liquid. I've been using e-cigarettes since Christmas and can really feel the difference since giving, them, giving up normal cigs. I will carry on using them, but not from this company. You just don't expect something like that to happen from such a reputable brand, and I definitely won't be using them again. So, he's bought something from a company Charged it with the wrong charger, um, who's to blame here? Was there a fault with the battery? Was there a fault with the charger? Um, is the iPad charger at the correct voltage and amperage to charge that battery? Probably not. Um, so, you know, there's lots of variables here, so you can't really blame anybody, can you? Um, batteries fail all the time. iPod batteries, laptop batteries, camera batteries, batteries in your old Walkman that used to blow up and do stupid things. So the fact that this has exploded um, is regrettable and it's not, obviously not very nice for the young girl. Uh, and in Metro, they <laughs> this was on my tablet earlier because I get Metro delivered straight to my tablet and I did a screenshot of this. E-cig explodes in barmaid's face. Yeah, did it explode in her face or did it just shoot past her? because that's what it looks like on the video. If it exploded in her face, it would have been right in her face, wouldn't it? So a bit of sensationalism there by, uh, by Metro, in my humble opinion. Um, but yes, the wrong charger was used. That could be what caused the issue. What a chap think. Yeah, whip it up. <laughs> I won't say what he says, but uh, plugged into the wrong charger. Yes. Yep, Max Drummer's put, it's not a legit Apple charger. My neighbour's kid bought a replica charger and it fried his iPod. Well, there was a story some years ago about uh, somebody who bought a, I think it was a Nintendo charger for her son and they went to, they were in China or they went to the Far East on holiday or somewhere on holiday. Uh, he plugged it in, he was slightly damp when he plugged it in and he was electrocuted and killed. Didn't get electric shock, he was electrocuted. And it turns out that the charger in question was uh, not real, didn't comply to any safety uh, regulations whatsoever, uh, and uh, that's what happens. You know, pays your money, you takes your choice, and if you don't use the right charger for the right battery, then you could get failures. You could, of course, get failure anyway. We don't know if it had been stood on, dropped, whatever. We don't know. But anyway. That was that story. Yes, and I'm sure that will go on for some time and I'm sure a lot of mileage will be taken out of that um, for the wrong reasons or the right reasons. I don't know. I don't know the pub in question. I was too young to go to the pub when I was at Comprehensive. <laughs> but there you go. So on to my next little story. And this appeared and then disappeared. Uh, and if you're quick, you may have seen it on the Vapor Trails um, TV Facebook page because Kat posted it this morning and it's been tweeted around a lot, and it is this one. A pharmacy in Shropshire 
A Shropshire pharmacist has criticised firms that have chosen to sell e-cigarettes and vowed never to stock them until they are sufficiently tested. Bosses at the pharmacy Caxton, Oswestry, said the decision by change of Boots, Lloyd's and Rowland's pharmacies to begin making money out of alternative to the traditional cigarette is sending mixed messages to their customers. And John Gentle, superintendent pharmacist at the pharmacy in Oswald Road, said it's not something we agree with both ethically and medically. Really? Because if you go to their website, you can buy these. Yes, strange. They may look like e-cigs. Do they look like e-cigs to you? Let's have another look. Yes, I think they look a bit like e-cigs. Um, they also have a kit, if I go to the right screen, which is that one, yes. The Vivid Electronic Cigarette Starter Kit. Um, so, they've said that they don't sell them, but yet on their online webpage, they do sell them. Um, now, it's interesting to note, if you look at, at the webpage itself, at the bottom, um, you'll see in the bottom corner there, powered by the pharmacy centre, content by Medicine Chest. It could be that those products are offered for sale by them, but they're on the Caxton Pharmacy website. That is, I don't know, I don't know if he's aware of that or not. Um, but uh, if you look on the link that was posted earlier, you'll find this. Yes, because the actual story has been removed. Uh, and uh, it was removed after some tweeting by somebody you may or may not know. He's a chappy called Dave Dawn. Um, and uh, yes, he let the Shropshire Live team know about what was uh, being sold. And they have now withdrawn the story until they get clarification on said items. Yes. So uh, very quickly, something has come out and been taken away again um, because there's conflicting information. The pharmacist saying we don't sell them because we don't agree with them, yet you can actually buy them from their online service. Um, so we have a mixed message there. And it'd be interesting to see what happens with this story. Yes, it will, won't it? What's chat? Yes, Mr. Jones in chat. Sort of thing he should have checked before going in the papers. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? When you're in the papers or when you take something online, unless you've done your checking, you could end up looking a little bit silly. Not that I'm saying he may or may not look silly in any way. Um, staying on the fence and legal. Yes, anyway, there you go. Um, and indeed, Alan, kudos to DD for punting it in the direction of the publication themselves. Uh, and they have taken the right step in taking down that story. And luckily, I'd got the screenshot before they did it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have got one, would I? Um, but there you go. So I was in the right place, right time for that one. Oh, yes. So let us move on from the news. Um, did I have something else? No, that was it. I did have another slide, but we don't need to go into that. It's a little bit more of that story. Um, but uh, you get the gist. Doesn't agree with them, but they're still on sale. Story was taken down. Watch this space for the updated story. Yeah. Right then, a couple of weeks ago, I said I was going to be in Scotland and then Bristol. Uh, and on last week's show, I had a bit of VT for you, but I didn't play it. Um, and what I did was, I did a little, um, a little juicy juicy using my little uh, dripper here. Let me shove it on close you can. Yes, little dripper there. Uh, and um, I had it with some juice. And I thought, I'll just do a little juicy juicy for you, which I did. And um, here it is. Enjoy. How do? It is I. Um, if you're watching last week's show, you'd have uh, seen that I was going to be away all week in Scotland and Bristol. Uh, and I'm currently sat here in Bristol, having done what I needed to do this morning. Uh, and I'm just kind of hanging around, waiting until I can uh, go and do some more server type stuff um, a little bit later on today. So I thought, I'll, just, I'll do a little juicy juicy for you. Yeah, why not? Uh, and I've got this. And this is an Exo Juice from Liberty Flights, as you can see. It is tobacco vanilla, and it's VG. 
uh, 24 milligram. Uh, and this was purchased last week and it was on offer. It was a, a £2.50 special. Yeah. Um, so I thought I'd give it a go. Uh, and um, smells tobacco y. If you've ever used Perfumer's Apprentice M Tobacco, it smells a bit like that. Um, and that flavouring, I have to say, M Tobacco is a really pungent one. You need like a couple of drops max. Um, I made the mistake of just kept putting more and more in because I wasn't tasting it. And then once it was steeped, it was uh, nasty. But there you go. So I've got some XO juice, VG, uh, 24 milligram, tobacco vanilla. Uh, and on here, I have a little dripper, uh, which is dual coil, but I've set it up as a single coil. Um, and um, I've got it on the MVP V2. Um, I was going to use the Evic, but I was charging it last night in my hotel. Uh, and I think I've left it at the hotel. I'm going back there later, but uh, yes. So um, I've got the MVP with me. I do have the VTR, um, but um, it wouldn't really fit on there. So I'm just gonna put a few drops on. Uh, and this is coiled up at 1.8 um, ohms resistance using one of those pre-made wire that I got uh, last year. Um, and I've currently got this on, what is it on, 9 watts, so uh, we'll give it a go and see what happens, eh? Take a little while for the flavour to come through. I'll just put some more on. Using my long drip tip, not the one that comes with it, and I'm just going to squeeze a load in there since I'm not going to be testing anything else today. Uh, and uh, we'll give it another go. Hmm. Going to move the air holes so they're in line. So I'm getting tobacco. Um, okay. I'm getting quite a lot of tobacco and a decent amount of vapour as well because this is a VG juice, so it will give you more vapour than uh, than a PG. Um, hence. Uh, I like a bit of VG, and I do my juices now about 60, 40, 70, 30 PG VG. Um, I used to just make them more or less all VG, but now I do put some PG in there. Um, it's okay. It's a tobacco. It's a tobacco flavour. Um, I'm not really getting much in the way of vanilla, I have to say. Um, I can kind of smell a bit of vanilla in the vape, but I'm not getting the taste of it too much, if I'm honest. But it's not unpleasant. Um, for tobacco juice it's not bad at all in fact I'd be more inclined I might just add a few drops of uh, menthol in there or maybe a few drops of uh, ethyl maltol solution um, just in that I've got in PG um, following Kat's recipe that she uses for the ethyl maltol or the ethyl maltol um, just to give it a bit of a different kick I think because I'm not really getting in vanilla um, but for a tobacco juice um, it's not bad not bad and um, for £2.50 it's not bad at all
Now I'm not sure if the price is still £2.50. I'll check. Um, because they have these kind of weekly offers on at Liberty Flights at the moment. Um, and I did buy some other stuff. I bought some very nice caramel flavouring um, to make my uh, hazelnut dolce leche caramel um, juice that I make. And all those flavourings are all the same. They're all Perfumer's Apprentice that I use for that particular juice. Um, and uh, I use Liberty Flights for those. Other retailers are, of course, available. Um, but in so much as this XO, I do like XO juices and I do use the XO coffee ones, especially the caramel latte, which I do like. Um, and I just thought I'd give this one a punt, um, seeing it was uh, cheap. Yeah, so not bad. Nothing to write home about though which is a bit of a shame, but there you go. You can't like everything, um, just as I didn't like the spider venom. Um, but, you know, Davey loves the spider venom. Um, but, um, yeah, I think I might just mix it up with something else, give it a bit of bump. Um, it, it, it is quite a, a tobacco-y flavour, um, seeing as it's tobacco vanilla. So um, I think a bit of ethyl maltol or a bit of uh, menthol just to lift it slightly would help, I think. Hmm. And with that, on this um, very nice, bright, sunny day in Bristol, it's back to me in the studio. And it is back to me. Hello. Um, yes, just reading chat there as, as that was playing out. Uh, and um, I did have it on the MVP. I've got it on the uh, uh, SVD now. Uh, and what I've done with it is I've put about two mils of the same strength juice, but menthol. And that has changed the flavour. Yes. Hmm. And now it's better. <laughs> like I said, you can't like everything, you know, um, you can't like every single juice that's out there. Some you're going to like more than others. Um, and this week's offer, by the way, at Liberty Flights, because I got an email this morning, is cherry menthol. So I may well have some of that, because I do like a bit of cherry menthol as well. Uh, and um, drip box, no, I'm not in Bristol. I'm in South Yorkshire. I was in Bristol in my car when I filmed that because I was working in Bristol that day uh, and who else somebody said about the car I'm trying to work out what the car was and I'm just going through oh a dripper box yes it's actually a Vauxhall, a Vauxhall Insignia um, Tourer so that's an estate to you and me um, yes yeah, very comfy um, since I do about 25 to 30,000 miles a year which is not bad in some people's because I do a lot more and um, a lot of people do a lot less but yes, I do a lot of miles uh, and I'm six foot five, so I need a big car. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. That was the juice. Um, it's better now. I've made a little modification to it. Um, but as it was, I wasn't really getting the vanilla um, and I was getting more of uh, an M type tobacco, which was the flavour I was talking about that uh, I overloaded on a juice once. It was grim, I must say. Anyway, I'm blethering on uh, and it's time for the adverts. And when we come back, we're going to be looking at this, the Spinner 2. Uh, and also, we're going to have the second part of the box mod. Why not? See you in two minutes, people. Vapacine is proudly sponsored by Health EV, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.
now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. And we're back with part two. Yes, and uh, just watching chat there through the adverts. And yes, you need to be a, a computer technician, as I am, <laughs> to work on cars these days. Even some cars, if you have the brake discs changed, you or the brake pads changed, you have to have them reset in the computer so it knows they're there. Um, it's just another license to print a few more quid, isn't it? Luckily, I've got a garage that's not too expensive. Um, because it did have its first MOT and service uh, last week, which was painful, as well as the tax, which was painful. Um, but there you go, I digress. Now then, let's look at the old spinner, or I should say the new spinner, the Spinner 2. Um, here is a little bit of VT that I did a little earlier. Well, actually, it was a few days ago, but here it is. Today... I have for you the Vision Spinner 2. Oh yes, uh, and also the new EVOD glass tank, dual coil, bottom coil um, tank. So we'll look at the uh, Vision Spinner 2 first. Both these came from my good friend over at UK eSig store. The uh, Vision Spinner 2 is currently $29.99. Um, it doesn't come with a charger or anything else just to let you know. Um, comes in a little box and then the plastic bag comes off and there we have it. Um, it's It's got a nice weight to it, I have to say. Let me zoom in a little bit uh, and you can have a closer look. There we go. So you can see it's the uh, standard Ego threading, 510 connection and Ego threaded on the top going down there's a button uh, and it's not the familiar round button this is kind of a well it's uh, I'm not quite sure what shape that would be to be fair kind of a longer hexagon at the top uh, with a little V and that's where the light comes in and then on the bottom you'll see this quite nifty solid metal twist potentiometer uh, which changes the voltage from 3.3 volts all the way up to 4.8 as you would normally see um, and it's a lot it's a lot more definite the um, the voltage change is a lot more definite than the old spinner the V1 um, the other thing I will say if you've got big fingers is when you're turning it um, your fingers push into those these little bits here but then I suppose you could always you know do it with a coin <laughs> although you don't really need to. Um, so 3.3 all the way to 4.8 um, and obviously in between the major markings are at uh, 4.8, 4.3, uh, 3.8 and 3.3 so you know in between you will have the in between voltage so 3.5, uh, 4, 4.5 uh, etc you get the kind of gist uh, and it is the same as any other vision battery really um, five clicks on five clicks off the light flashes and then lights up when you press your fire button and then to switch it off five quick clicks and it's off again now this is a 1600 milliamp hour battery um, it's got a, uh, a new and upgraded PCB for uh, control and stability. They've changed the outside coating uh, and the top part of it is got little raised dots um, which will obviously help if, if uh, you've got wet hands. <laughs> it's not going to slip out your hands. Um, but the overall finish is, is very nice. It looks quite nice, kind of a carbon flash type um, affair going on uh, and more or less what we would call a gunmetal grey isn't it. Um, the bottom section here is slightly knurled but you 
don't really feel that because what you do feel are the little bits in between here on your fingers. Now, I have got big fingers, as you can tell, uh, and as you know, being a big guy, uh, if you've got smaller fingers, then you probably wouldn't get as, as much of those in your fingers. But it's still, it's a nice definite twist, if you like. Um, like I said, 510 connection on the top with the Ego threading. Now, I've had uh, three spinners over the past year, uh, and I keep sitting on them. I keep forgetting them in my pocket, and then the top section breaks off and the wires get broken, and I solder them back on, but then it comes off again, and then I lose the little button in the side. Um, so <laughs> hopefully with this one, I won't. And now what else can I tell you? Uh, the voltage output 3.3 to 4.8 volts, uh, and the input is 4.2 volts at 420 milliamps. So you do need a vision um, charger because this doesn't come with one. Um, so any of your normal vision chargers will work with this battery, seeing as it's the same company. Um, and most of them give that, that input output voltage uh, on the charge. Let's put something on it uh, and we're gonna use the um, EVOD. So let's look at that next. So here we are with the uh, glass EVOD, uh, it's dual coil. Comes of course with the, uh, the scratch, <laughs> scratch and sniff, with the scratch and check number. So you can go onto the website, so you can tell that uh, the device you've got is real, it's pucker. It's uh, not moody or booty or fake, um, because there are quite a lot of Kanga stuff that has been faked. So you can go to that website, put your number in and it will tell you whether or not this is real. Well, it'd be a real sticker, at least. You'd hope that if it's a real sticker, it would be the real item inside. And uh, here we go. Here is the Kanga glass tank. And I have to say, just from holding it, it is a lot heavier <laughs> than a standard Kanga EVOD. And uh, you can see here, it has a 510 connection drip tip, which is different to the existing can get EVODs because you can't change the drip tips. Um, so if I was just to uh, get another one, for instance, put that one in, you can use that one if you wanted to. I'm not sure if it looks any, any good with that one, to be fair, but there you go. So it will fit any 510 connection drip tip, which is good. I like, I like that because it's nice to be able to change if you want to. Um, of course, being bottom coil, it is bottom fed and it's the standard affair quite a long tube um, on the uh, atomizing head and of course with these you can take them apart and you can definitely rebuild that judging by how it's made and it is as always written on what the uh, resistance is and this is 1.5 ohms it's really really small you're probably not going to see it even if i zoom right in to right on here uh, and it says 1.5 ohms it does tell you on the box strangely enough that it is 1.5 ohm comes in 1.5 and 2 um, so for a dual coil 1.5 ohms pretty good and like i said easy peasy to change one if you can't be bothered rebuilding them, you can just buy new ones. Um, and given the fact that the tank is now Pyrex, means that you can use whatever juice you like and it's not going to uh, crack or break um, or go dodgy on you. Um, I'm not gonna put anything that, that would damage it this time. What I have is, I've got some uh, maple waffle. This is a VGXO juice um, from Limited Flights that I've had for a week or so yeah so uh, we're gonna fill some of that and as you know and if you don't know fill in the bottom call clear miser fill from the bottom missing the center post otherwise you'll get it all down your fingers and you can see there I'm just about up to the top of the line so that will do for now. 
screw in your atomizing head assembly finger tight turn it upside down and give it a couple of minutes just to sort itself out let the juice soak into the uh, the wicks because uh, otherwise you'll get a nice dry burn which we don't really want do we so I'll just run through it again replaceable 510 drip tip you can put your own one on if you wish glass pyrex tank or pyrex glass tank this one is stainless steel there are lots of other colors available um, at your casing store as well as the replacement heads now they sell these ones for kanga evod pro tank uni tank um, all in one and they uh, they come out at two pound 49 in 1.8 2.2 or 2.5 ohm resistance so not too bad and of course other retailers are available uh, i'm just telling you what it is on ukesic store because they sent me these um, so it'd be rude not to wouldn't it so this is all soaked in so let's put it on the spinner v2 and it is simple as that Screw it on. Turn on the battery and we're going to go in at 4.3 volts and uh, see what happens. And it vapes quite nicely. So I'm going to go away and use this for a few days. And um, by the time you see this on Tuesday, I'll have a much better idea of uh, how it works and how it lasts and the battery use uh, and everything else. So I can give you an update then. So in the meantime, let's go back to the studio. And it's back to me. Hello. Um, yes, just looking through chat as that was playing out, um, and um, carbon flash, someone said, or grey, something grey, who was that? Whip it up, I think it was. I'm having to go back through my chat screen now. Um, it's definitely, um, definitely dangerous looking at chat if you're following the football, um, because there's a game on tonight, um, and it's just as well I didn't really know... <laughs> I wasn't bothered about the score because it came up in chat. Um, <laughs> so I won't tell you what it is, um, but I don't support that team anyway. So it's all good. Um, yes, now, this is the new spinner. And this is one of my broken ones. Uh, and you can see in the top, if I put it there, um, that I've lost the button. And I lost the button because when I sat on it with a tank on it, um, I pulled out the top section. Uh, I did this more than once uh, and ripped the wires out uh, and I soldered them back and it worked again and then it happened again and um, when I took the top off the second time to uh, solder it I lost the button and I could never find it I think the hoover had it um, but yes so it's slightly slightly longer um, and slightly thinner than the original spinner but it's intrinsically the same thing um, you know, with a different voltage change spin at the bottom, um, slightly longer. Uh, and as I said in the VT, they're more definite. Um, the original spinner span a little bit looser, in my opinion. Um, and of course, the top section, if I take the EVOD off very quickly, the top section is also slightly shorter. There's not as much here, um, which is a difference. And of course, the funky button. Um, let me go to the main shot. Here we go. Yes, so the, the, the button is uh, not the little round button that used to be, but that kind of funky superhero button, as someone said in chat. Um, the light goes white, then it goes blue, then it goes yellow, and then it goes red when there's not enough. And I got two days use out of this before I recharged it using a vision um, charger. <laughs> the one I got with my original spinner. Um, not a moody one, not a booty one, not a dodgy one. 
and not using an iPad charger either, um, using a proper charger. Um, and it charges uh, relatively quickly uh, at uh, 5 volts, 420 milliamps. Um, and like I said in the VT, 1600 milliamp battery. Um, now, let's see what else chat have had to say on that. Um, yes, Daz. Reptiles TV does um, would like it if there was a longer tube so you could get more in uh, and then someone else pointed out that the actual um, atomizer head would then not fit in um, and as I said at the beginning of the show I was filling this with my juice and uh, I didn't pay much attention what I was doing and I filled it all the way over to the end uh, and it was all dripping out through the middle um, which is not ideal because it went all over my leg and all of my desk uh, and I've probably had a little bit too much nicotine now <laughs> but there you go uh, and because I've waffled on so much uh, it's just going to be the normal 45 tonight um, I shall give you the box mod video next week yeah and I might even be able to find the mod itself um, now the EVOD the glass EVOD um, I do quite like I do like EVODs and I did buy some moody ones from that site over there in China uh, which were rubbish um, but the actual proper ones I do I do quite like uh, and I like the fact that I can put any juice I like into this now because it is glass uh, and as I said in the VT it is perfectly rebuildable um, should you want to uh, and if you don't there's plenty of places where you can buy the heads uh, if you wanted to do that as well let me just go that down to chat again Oh, you've missed a lot, the Furious Fury. You're going to have to watch it on playback. <laughs> uh, and uh, yes, the rest of the stuff in chat, not good. Um, don't put it in your front pocket, Leanna. Um, yeah, I do tend to put them in my front pocket and then get in the car. Uh, and of course, it's a, perfect, it's a perfect shape to get in the car. When you sit down, oops, and it pulls the top out. Um, so yes, I do tend to put this type now into my inside pocket. Um, for that is how I almost killed my EVIC. Uh, and now the top of my EVIC is a bit loose. And when I drop it, it comes out as it did yesterday. And I had to solder not one, but both of the wires yesterday. So I need to get some epoxy or something on it to seal it up. <laughs> so, it, so it will not then fall apart if I drop it again. Um, I'm usually quite good at not dropping things, um, but my record of late has not been good uh, and in fact I first broke the EVIC when I got in the car to do that a bit of VT that you saw earlier in Bristol <laughs> but never mind yes I, I broke it on the way to Bristol and then left it in my hotel kind of loose but there you go so that was it for tonight then um, don't forget tomorrow night it is team t it is team talk uh, with the usual group uh, and then on Thursday, it's Dave with Sav, plus guests for VT Talk. Sunday, of course, it is Dave Kitson with Dave's Tucker Box, which takes us back around to next week for the Haze Hour with Kat and Keith and Mr. David Dawn. And I will see you here next Tuesday. Don't forget, of course, that every night of the week, there is RY4 Radio. And also, don't forget, starting now uh, on the other page is DE Talk, our German language show. That's it. So until next week, have a good week and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. is proudly sponsored by Health Evade, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. <laughs>